Now that we understand how PGP works, we can actually start using GPG and seeing how to operate it. The first step is to simply open up a terminal, and what we're going to need to do now is generate a public and a private key pair. To do that, we simply type in GPG space hyphen hyphen gen hyphen key. And GPG is now going to ask us some questions about the type of key we want to create. We're going to choose the default key, and we're going to uh, stay with the default size. Now, a larger key is more secure than a smaller key, but the uh, standard size should work just fine. Now, the expiration date for a key is actually an important security consideration. If a key is set to expire at a certain time, and the key is compromised before the key has expired, the key will only be compromised for the duration of the time that the key is still valid. If the key is never set to expire, then the key will be compromised indefinitely. We're going to choose six months for an expiration date on our key. So now, just for illustrative purposes, we're going to use John Doe as a name. Email address will be john at example.com. And this is OK. We're going to hit O. Now, a passphrase is actually the most important step in this process. The password has to be long. It has to be something that a human or a computer will find very difficult to guess. And it also has to be something that you can remember. Because if it's too complicated to remember, chances are you're going to write it down somewhere. And if somebody else finds the piece of paper with the password on it, then your key has been compromised. So we're going to choose this password. And I believe this fits all the criteria of a good password. And enter it. Enter it one more time. There we go. Now, while the key is being generated, it's a good idea to move your mouse around a little bit to give it um, a little bit more random number uh, entropy for the creation of the key pair. Okay, so the key pair has now been created. Now, if John wants anybody to send encrypted data to him, he's going to have to give them his public key. So we're now going to export his key to a file. To do that, we simply type in gpg space hyphen hyphen armor. This is because we want the key ASCII armored so we can send it in plain text over medium such as email or Usenet. Then we're going to do hyphen hyphen export, and then we're just going to put in the name of the key, which is John Doe. Don't forget the quotation marks. Now we're going to redirect this to a file called key. And there we go. If we cat key, we can see that the key has been successfully exported. So now we're going to pretend that this key has been emailed to somebody named Joe. So we're going to become Joe here for just a second. Now, now that Joe has received the key, he has to import it into his key ring. So to do that, Joe simply types in gpg space hyphen hyphen import, and then the name of the file containing the key, which in our case is simply key. And as you can see, the public key has been successfully imported. Now, Joe here has a message, top secret message. We can look at it here. As you can see, it's very sensitive data. And he is going to encrypt this message to John. So to do that, he simply has to type in gpg space hyphen hyphen armor again, and then hyphen hyphen encrypt. And we want to encrypt the message file. So we're going to type in message. Now we need to put in the user ID of the person we want to encrypt to. In this case, John Doe. Now this is actually a very important thing here. The most common attack on PGP is known as a man-in-the-middle attack. And what that is, is somebody falsifying a public key, meaning giving you a public key that belongs to someone else other than who it claims to belong to. So one very important thing is you must always use only very trustworthy keys when choosing keys to encrypt data with. Now, a trust certificate is very useful. What it does is it allows other people to sign a person's trust certificate and thereby give it more validity. For illustrative purposes now, we're going to use this untrustworthy key, but please be aware if you're actually using PGP, you only want to use public keys with a high level of trust. And since we're done, we can simply hit enter. And if we look here, there's a new file called message.asc. And if we cat message.asc, we can see that the data has been successfully encrypted. 
So now we are going to go back to John, and Joe has now emailed this encrypted data to John, and John now has to decrypt it. To do that, he simply types in gpg, space hyphen hyphen, decrypt, and then the name of the file, which is message.asc. And then he's going to have to enter the secret passphrase he created when he made the key pair. As you see, the password has been accepted, and the data has been decrypted. Signing data with GPG is just as simple as encrypting data with GPG. If, instead of encrypting that message, John simply wanted to sign it, he would go through the following steps. First, he would type in GPG space hyphen hyphen clear sign in the name of the file, which would be, in our case, message. And since he's signing this with his private key, the first thing he would need to do is enter his password for the private key. And uh, we do not want to overwrite the file we already have. We're going to select no and enter a new file name. We're going to call it message.signed. And as we see here, there is a new file. And if we cat that file, we can see the message is at the top in plain text. And the signature and the encrypted hash, that is, is down at the bottom. Now, this can be emailed through plain text to Joe again. So let's become Joe. Now Joe receives this signed message and for him to verify the signature he simply needs to type in gpg space hyphen hyphen verify and the name of the file he wants to verify which is uh, message.signed. And as you can see the uh, signature is good, it checks out, it gives us a warning again about not using a trusted public key. Now uh, let's try a little experiment. Let's pretend that this data is changed somehow. So we're going to go ahead and edit message.signed. Suppose that one character here is different. Suppose this E comes out to be an F instead of an E. Let's go back to, to Joe and see if the signature still checks out. So we're going to do gpg space hyphen hyphen verify message dot signed. And as we can see here, there's a bad signature. And that means that the hash that was decrypted does not match the hash of the data. And that is what should happen because the data has been altered. Now that you understand how PGP works and how to use GPG from the command line, there are a few more details that deserve mentioning. Once you have your public key, you may want to upload it to a key server so that anyone can encrypt data to you. It is always important to create a revocation certificate before you upload your key and keep it backed up in a safe place. This is in case you lose your private key or the password to your private key. Otherwise, without a revocation certificate, you will have no way to take your public key off the server. It is also important to talk about the vulnerabilities of PGP and other encryption software. I already mentioned the importance of a very strong password and using only public keys that have a good trust certificate or come from a totally trustworthy source. It is also important to make sure you remove all traces of the original data you have encrypted. Otherwise, an attacker may have a chance at accessing the original unencrypted data. The command shred takes care of this for you. This command on the screen will remove all traces of a file from your computer. It does this by rewriting data over the parts on the disk that contain the file repeatedly, making it impossible to recover even with sophisticated forensics equipment. Please note that this command may not work under some journal file systems or RAID devices. It is also important to note that PGP is highly susceptible to key logging programs that capture keystrokes which determine the password of a private key. It is best to make sure that your computer is totally secure before using PGP. When emailing GPG messages, it is best to use the GPG front end that is built into your mail client because it will generate the necessary MIME headers into the email message. Many Linux mail clients, such as Kmail, have GPG functionality built in. Others, such as SeaMonkey and Thunderbird, have add-ons that allow for GPG functionality. The extension for those clients is called Enigmail.